my sermon this morning, what is my message actually to you, my simple message to you this morning, simple, but I think it's important for us, is actually fear not. And uh, I would usually put, oh, it's gone. Uh, what I would put in my title, fear not, then ellipsis, you know, three different dots, saying that there is something coming. Fear not because there is something coming. So that's what it is about this morning, fear not. I've taken this actually from a discussion we had last week. Um, Ashley won't mind me saying that too. He actually, because I find that whatever we do here, by the way, whatever we study, whatever we discuss, whatever we do together as people, and whatever we, whatever we did privately as well, you know, studied God's word privately, there is always something common amongst us. We want to be prepared properly for the kingdom. And we want to be part of the kingdom one day too. And everything works for us together too. So I think that experiences in here, experiences outside of here too, when we discuss God's word, there's something important to keep in mind too. I'm going to be very brief on this, by the way, but I'm going to say it too. So it's actually said, what is the actual, or what he asked in fact, what is the most important commandment that he said last week, that he asked last week? And the, the answer was, uh, what, what did you say, uh, Ashley? I'm going to talk to you as well, because this is um, um, among friends, as I said. You say, fear not, didn't you? Fear not, fear not. And that gave me a kind of, even though I was already preparing a, a message for you, that gave me the kind of uh, focus too for, our, for today's, re, uh, today's uh, message to you. Um, bear with me, I'm not going to be very, very long. I just want to be very succinct if I can be. But I just wanted you to know where, where this is coming from, because when you go when you go to the les the court the lessons for this quarter too, you will find even in the next two lessons you will find the word fear is going to be mentioned as well. So there are there's something that we need to, to to think about all the time. So that's the background, if you want, to my uh, kind of message this morning. I will also take the text I've just read to you. Uh, to as a, as a kind of a platform, if you want, a backdrop for my message this morning, simply because I felt that even though I am going to concentrate on a different text for our you know, message this morning, I felt that within that reading, there is something that we need to actually keep in mind too. And from 1 John chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, I wanted to actually keep in or actually keep in mind um, that fears involves torment, and this is one thing I want you to keep. Fear involves torment. This is the idea that is actually uh, making putting me in a, way, in a way to speak to you this morning. But that is something that I will come back to at the very end of the message. So here we go. Um, fear not. Um, if you were to take a look around, whether it's here or, and we have people online too, if you were to take a look around, what do we have today? And it has been at least how many months now? At least 16 months, 17 months now, we're coming to 17 months. <coughs> what, we do, what do we have around us? Uncertainties, isn't it? We all actually sort of wearing a mask, and we know that on the 19th of uh, July things will change, but we don't even know what sort of changes. Well, we do have an idea what the changes will be, but we don't know what the consequences of changes will be. We do. That's where we are, aren't we? So we are living in a world here where us and uncertainties abound. We have a lot of uncertainties. And those uncertainties bring along fear as well as anxiety. So this is what I'm going to address today. We are going to address our anxiety today as well. So as we go through life, they actually, we've been through life, I've worked to some extent, and we are going through life, but there will be uncertainties. That's just part of, you know, being a human, I suppose being part of a, uh, a human, humankind, so to say, yeah? So we we'll have to keep that in mind. Um, what I would like to do actually is that uh, I will only concentrate on one text and I'm going to 
it's Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8. That's the only text I will actually keep uh, our sort of uh, our focus upon. So if you were to turn to that, I'm going to read that text very slowly in my own way, because sometimes I rush, you know, I do rush. I know that. Yes. Okay. So Philippians chapter 4, and it's verses uh, 4 to 8. And that's what he says. That's what it reads like. Rejoice in the Lord always. 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 Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the final, the last verse in that, in that text says, finally, brethren, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So fear not. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8, asks us to consider our situation when we are anxious. And borrowing, today I borrowed from somebody, actually from, because I researched the, little, the, the, the fear and fear not a little bit too, and borrowing an acronym from a known preacher and writer, I would like to explain to you how our Heavenly Father has made provision for all for us to deal with the annoyances and torments of a fallen world. The preacher I'm borrowing from uses the word calm, C-A-L-M. C-A-L-M, and the emphasis is on the text itself. And he uses uh, the, the acronyms as such to suggest calm. Calm brings, takes away the, you know, the difficulties, anxiety that we have and so on. And the focus of what I said to you is from Philippians 4, verses 4 to 8. And this is where we start looking at what those verses are saying to us. But before we go to the verses too, we are reminded of something very important. Psalm 121 verse one says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. Where is my help coming from? That's the starting point too, when we consider what is being said in the text. Philippians 4, 4 to 8. With that in mind, and looking at verse 4 of Philippians chapter 4, we are asked not to fret because fretting only causes harm, but to rejoice in the Lord always. Do not meditate on, the prob on a problem when faced with one. The more we do, the more we do so, the bigger the problem becomes. By rejoicing in the Lord, we make a clear decision and a very important one that for that matter. We are indeed further encouraged to consider what Apostle Matthew says to us in Matthew chapter four and verse 29, and verse 30. Matthew from in chapter 
um, 14 verses <clears throat> 29 and 30 says, quote, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. That was mentioned this morning too, if you remember in our discussion. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. What is being said in that verse, which is um, 14 verse 4 of Philippians, he said there, once you have your sight, focus on the Lord, that is what is important. The moment you let down your guards, they say you get distracted from other things, this is when you perish. So that's what the, the lesson is about you. But whatever you, whenever you lift your eyes to God, you are indeed celebrating his goodness, his love, and so on. Lift up your eyes to him. And he said, always lift up your eyes and rejoice in the Lord. Lift up your mind to, to the one who can save. If we really pay attention to who God is, what he stands for, what he does in our lives, we lift up our minds and our hearts to him all the time, whatever the case. So celebrate this. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Then we come to looking, this was C, celebration. Celebrate who God is. Celebrate what he does in our lives. Celebrate what he can do in our lives. Celebrate how we can choose, change things along. Celebrate that the things that are annoying us, the difficulties that we are going through, can be taken away by him and him alone permanently. So the second part of the calm part, a sort of acronym, is very much to do with A. A actually to do with ask, ask. Philippians chapter four, verse six, tell us to ask for God's help. Now, all I'm saying to you this morning, these things are very known to you and very kind of practiced by you many times too. But it's just is a reminder that we need to really pay attention to what is being said here too. Those verses from Philippians are strongly encouraging us to do what we should do when we are faced with anxiety and uh, difficulties and problems, if you want. Tell us, in the, 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 the verse six tells us to ask for God's help. And the, the point is being made here, pray. Okay, the path of peace is always paved with prayer. Prayer is a very important aspect of our inner kind of dealing with difficulties in this life. And we know that too. Indeed, when we pray, we are doing the most important thing that even science will support over and over. You know, I... When I was writing that, when I was writing and putting my, my thoughts together too, I was going to start by telling you a little bit about what I knew about annoyances, what I knew, what I knew about problems, human problems, what I knew about anxiety, what I knew about difficult about fear, and I was going to uh, also tell you what is the difference between anxiety and fear and so on and so forth. Okay. And I was also going to talk to you about the stress because I actually, not so much, I have a kind of um, background in it, uh, in the study of stress and, and so on that I, you know, that I would like to talk to you about. But going back to 1993, I was involved in a research project to do with stress. And back in, like, in 2001, I was also leading in a, in a, in a, in a research project that actually was, was looking at stress and how people cope in different ways. And my point here, just to, to tell you about this, is that what has been found over the years, and if you were, if you were to go to the empirical evidence, which is evidence come along through research, through randomized controlled trial and so on and so forth, 
what, 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 what has been found over the years is that you need to, to really deal with your stress and your difficulties, you need indeed to actually go to and confide to somebody you can trust. That's the most important way of dealing with your stress and coping with your stress over and over. Even my findings were, were, were such that, that I could just confirm this all the time. And it was highly significant, not just significant to the point, it was highly significant that the coping approach was to go and confide to somebody. So briefly, what, uh, what I was going to say to you is that we need to speak to somebody who can actually, we can confide into, who can take our welfare into consideration, who will always have our, our, our welfare into consideration, and that is our father. Okay, God. So that is it. Prayer, prayer is very important. When we, con when we confide in our father, who is dear to us, there is no better one to go to. What is also uh, useful to remember too, and I remember, should remember Matthew when we say to go and ask uh, and we pray, uh, we go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 that says, ask and it shall be given you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open unto you. So what I'm trying to say to you as well here, it's that very much important, go, not so much leave wherever you are, but stay where you are, go on your, on your, on your knees, bow down, pray. And that is very important. Ask and it will be given you. You know, those promises too. You know, this morning we were discussing about those people grumbling on the way to the promised land. You know, when we're talking about those, uh, the experiences, the difficulties that they have, and the thing that they, the perception, the expectations, and so on. When we look at all these things, I came to the we came to that came to the point of saying to I was only going to say that to you, but that of course we do have to have, uh, give opportunities to others to speak. There's a promise, isn't it, at the end? Even the difficulties are there, the people join the company, so to say, to walk towards the promised land because they know that there's something good at the end. So that's a very, very important. The promise is there. So God is telling us here in Matthew 7, 7, you know, if you are to ask me, I promise you, I will answer. But you have to ask me in the right spirit, in the right way and so on. Now, I mean, God is not putting that, that condition on us. He's not saying that, but we know when we understand what we understand by asking fervently and kind of insensitivity and honesty and so on and so forth. So celebrate, ask, and then we come to the next point, which is L of calm. The letter L stands for leave. Um, But God, God has said, by the way, to us, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. But he also pleads to us to leave our concerns with him. I'm using the, the word leave in two ways here. I will never leave you, nor, nor forsake you. But he also says to us, leave your concerns with me. Okay? Let our requests and concerns be known to you. If something is causing you anxiety, <clears throat> pardon me, it's causing you pain, is distracting you from becoming unwell, leave your problems or problem or problems at the feet of God. Let God solve the problem or problems. Rejoice in the Lord. Further, be thankful for your so many existing blessings and raise up your hands to God. He will take your anxiety away. Somehow, we know that anxiety and gratitude cannot share the same heart. If we are grateful and then we are saying we are also anxious, the two do not belong together. 
The point is that they don't occupy the same space in our being. Either one is present or the other one is present. So we ask when you are grateful to God, yeah, anxiety, anxieties, problems, annoyances, uncertainties go away. Okay? So act, rejoice, pray, and leave the problem problems to God. And the last letter in our acronym is M. M is for meditate. So we celebrate, we ask, we leave our problems with God, and then we meditate. And that's an important part too. Because that without that, there is a problem. We can't manage our annoyances. Philippians verse 4 provides and uh, Verse 8 provides us with an uplifting statement. And I'm going to read that again because it's, I think it bears uh, another reading, actually. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and with giving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which support, surpasses all understanding, will God. I'm not making a mistake, but I said I'm reading verse seven. <laughs> Let's go back to verse eight, and that's very important. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue. And if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. You, as my friends, will definitely forgive me for reading the verse, not the wrong verse, but the verse before the last, the one I needed to read. Okay? So meditate uh, is um, our instruction in a sense that you, at the moment. Meditate on good things. Do not let anxious thoughts occupy our, we should not let the anxious thoughts occupy our mind. Do not let these thoughts dominate our lives. In this life, uncertainties abound, as I said before. So much of life can be outside our control. We will never be in control of everything around us, whether we like it or not. This is the way it is. This is human, you know, being a human as such. Even Chris, well, Christians as well, being Christians, we. We won't get away from uncertainties. They are there. And we can see that visib visibly today. Yeah? So, yes. <clears throat> so uncertainties will be there. And so much of life can be outside our control, as I say. When uncertainties are present, we can further meditate on the following. God has, be, has been faithful in the, the past. When we look at history, when we look at Abraham's situation, for example, we know that God is always faithful in his dealing with the human being. What did Abraham, Abraham, what did Abraham do? He was asked to leave his native land, go somewhere else and live there. What did he do when he was asked, when he was told that you actually would have, to have, would have an heir at his age? He had to a sort of believe in his God. What did he do when he, when he actually uh, partitioned some land amongst friends? He had always God in his presence. He was always faithful. He knew God was faithful all the time. So God has been faithful uh, in the past too. And he will be faithful today. Okay? God has not deserted, deserted us when things run out, turn out to be not as respected. You know, very often we get very discouraged at times. Well, we're not very discouraged. Uh, but, but at times we get discouraged when we, we go through difficulties and the, dis the difficulties persist in spite of our asking, our doing what we God is asking us to do. But God is always there. And I, I, I think, you know, looking at my own experiences, actually, of life experiences, he's always there 
somehow, you know, he will actually give what is what we require. He knows our needs and he will actually meet our needs all the time. But we have to keep on moving towards him all the time. Through his abundant love, he has given us also Jesus. From John chapter 3, verse 16, and you know that verse very, very well. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God has a plan, and his plan is always good. And we're reminded of this too when we go to Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We know all things work together. That's, uh, that's what the verse says. We know all things that, that we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Lastly, lastly, God has provided a secure in eternal future. And if we read that from Romans chapter 8, verse 17, it says, And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed, <clears throat> if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. He has made us heirs of the kingdom, of the kingdom. So Meditate on these points as all we are asked to, to do. And my concluding remark this morning is such. So as we take an approach to our uncertainties, the innumerable anxieties that we come across, let us ask God to always make us mindful that we need to celebrate our blessings ask fervent, fervently for his intervention when faced with difficulties. Learn to leave our difficulties with him, with him, and to meditate closely on his promises and to remember when faced with problems that we have God's perfect, unfailing, faithful love as our guide. We are not to be torment tormented by anxiety or fear. So say the Lord.